One of the most fundamental use cases for serverless is to create an API, an endpoint that you can call that will return some data. My name is Burke, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how to take an existing node API and convert that into a serverless API. So let's get started. All right, let's take a look at the application we're going to be working with today. This is a very simple CRUD application. This is what it looks like in the browser and allows us to put in some heroes and a saying, change the properties. And of course, those are persisted to a database. Now, the way this application is put together is it has a front end, which is built in React. It has a back end, which is built in Express. And that's what we're looking at here. We have a routes file, which handles all of the routes. So get, post, put, delete, RESTful API here, passing parameters along the route path. And those are then sent over to a hero service here, which pulls in all the MongoDB, uses a hero model, there's the schemas, the whole nine, and of course a file to connect to the database. And I'm using a Cosmos DB database with the MongoDB driver. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna refactor this application so that we can get rid of this entire server component here. I'm serious, and we'll move it to a, a serverless API. So let's do that. Let's open up a new window and open our sidebar. And I have the Azure Functions extension installed. Additionally, you'll need the Azure Functions CLI installed in order for this to work. Once you have those installed, you can create a new function just by clicking on this folder here. It'll ask us where we want to put it. We'll just say we want to put it in this folder here in a new folder called Heroes API. Select this, and we're going to use JavaScript in this project. And it will reopen with our project ready to go. Now, we don't have any functions, so let's go ahead and create one. Let me go ahead and hide some of these. In the Functions tab here, I'm going to click this little lightning bolt icon and select the current folder. We're going to use an HTTP trigger. Let's just call this first one Get Heroes. We use anonymous authorization. And before we can do anything here, we need to install the MongoDB driver so we can connect to Cosmos DB via the MongoDB driver. So I'm going to open up the terminal here, and we will first initialize our project here for NPM. And then we're going to do an NPM install. And we're going to install MongoDB, and we'll save it. All right, our package is installed. Now we can add the code in. Let's go ahead and close this down, collapse the sidebar. And I'm just gonna remove all of this code and put in the code for our heroes. So this code goes and gets the heroes and then returns them. This code will be available in a link I'll drop in the video description, so don't worry about the code for now. The only thing that's really important here is that we're connecting using an environment variable, which doesn't exist yet. We'll have to create that and then doing a query on the database. So let's create this environment variable here. Let's go back over here and we're going to open up the local settings and we need to just add that right here. So if we were to go back here to this file, let's just grab this and we'll just paste it in here, highlight it and put some quotes on it. There we go. And now we just need the Cosmos DB connection string. Where are we going to get that? Well, I also have the Azure Cosmos DB extension installed for VS Code. And with that, I can see all of the different database instances that I have. So I'm just going to grab this one here, and I'm going to say copy connection string. And then I'll just let me copy that connection string right in. Now we need to make one small change here, and that is that there is a breaking change in MongoDB driver 3.0 that requires us to encode this little double equal sign here. So we can do that by highlighting it and just saying convert selection. And then we'll scroll down and find the string to encoded URL. And it's percent 3D just two times. All right. So now that we've added this here, we have our setting. We want to test this out. So how do we run it? Well, let's go over here to the debug, press the green button, and then we'll go ahead and fire up our function application. And then we can hit this now via a URL. You might have saw that flash by. If we go back to the terminal, we can just copy this, or we could click it and it would work in the browser. We're going to use Postman. And let's compose a new request and send it. And there's our data, it's coming back. So we're connected to the database, so we've already taken care of the get. Uh, so let's go ahead and do another one. Let's do the, um, let's do the create next. We can go ahead and disconnect this and stop. This will close this terminal window here. And let's go back and do another function. So we'll click the lightning bolt, select the API, the uh, HTTP trigger, 
And let's do create hero will be our next one. Same thing, anonymous. And then let me paste some code in. All right, so this code, again, pretty, pretty plain in the sense that it's just doing a create of a, a record in our Cosmos DB database. One thing that we do have here that's a little bit different is that we're passing some parameters, ID, name, and saying. And we're passing those all on the body of the request. So let's go back over to Postman again. If we were to create another one of these, let's, let's copy this. Let's paste this in and this time it's create hero and we want to pass some parameters first we want to do a post to create a new item and in that body we're going to add a raw format it as json and then we'll just add our parameters here okay we're ready to issue this request let's just make sure we're running over here let's fire this up again and this time you'll see we have two functions there's our second one right there, create hero. Let's go back over and we'll hit send. And what did we get back down here at the bottom? Looks like we got our hero back. So let's check our get again. And there it is down at the bottom. All right, so we just need to add the last two methods. So let's do that. I'm just gonna do that really quickly. All right, we've got all four of our functions created here for a full CRUD API. We have a get, create, update and delete. Now, one of the things that we wanna do here is modify these functions a little bit so that they only respond to the right HTTP method. So we can come in here and look for methods. And for this one, we just want it to respond to get. And we can repeat this for the other functions as well. So for the create here, let's save this. It's going to be a post. For delete, it will be a delete. And for update, it will be a put. Okay, now our functions will only respond to the correct HTTP method. And this just helps us in creating a true RESTful API. So now we're ready to deploy this thing up to Azure Functions. We need a functions project to deploy it to in order for that to work. So I'm gonna open up this section here and let's create a new functions project. So let's do functions and create function app in Azure. Select my subscription here and we'll call this the heroes API. Okay. And our resource group, we can use an existing one. We'll create a new one. Just call it heroes API two is fine. Storage account, let's create a new one of those. We'll select the default as well. And then I'm just gonna pick East US cause that's close to where I am. And then this will create our Azure Functions project in Azure. All right, our function project's been created. Let's go ahead and check our code into source control so that we can pull it in somewhere. So I'm gonna go ahead into my git ignore and just make sure I have node modules in there, I do. And then let's go back and just add an initial commit here. And let's just go ahead and push it up by clicking the button here. I love the integration with git inside of VS Code. It makes it so much easier to use. Okay, let's go out and just refresh the repository, make sure all the code's there, it is. All right, great. We're ready to deploy this thing to our function app. So let's find that thing that we created and we'll just say open in portal. All right, here's our app. Let's go ahead and set it up to pull in our project from GitHub. So we're gonna go to deployment options and we're gonna set up a new one and we'll just follow the prompts. Select our project here. Select the Heroes API and the master branch is fine. We'll say okay. And this will kick off in a moment and we'll see a deployment from GitHub Fire as the webhook on GitHub fires and connects to Azure and then Azure pulls in our code automatically from the GitHub repo. All right, there we go. The webhook's fired and the code's coming in. While the code's being pulled in, let's go back to our VS Code project here and add in some of the application settings that we need for this thing to actually work. So let's expand this. If you remember, we had one application setting that was pretty important, and that was the Hero Cosmos DB connection string. That's right here. So we wanna make sure that we create an application setting on the server side to do that as well. So we can do that here just by saying add a new setting. We'll say Cosmos DB connection string, and then let's just copy this whole thing in and just paste it in. And there we go, our connection string is securely stored in Azure. Okay, our project's been deployed, so let's go ahead and have a look at what it looks like now. We'll just click on our functions here, and we should see 
now four functions inside of our project in the Azure portal. The get heroes, create hero, there they are, update and delete. Let's go ahead and test one of these out here. Let's go to the get heroes tab. And what we can do is we can just get the function URL. So we'll just copy this. And then let's go back over to Postman and we'll open a new tab and issue a new request here. So now we're hitting the functions app running in Azure. So we'll just go ahead and send that. All right, and our data is coming back. All right, so we've actually deployed an entire API, but one of the things that this API doesn't quite do the same as the existing node API that we were looking at earlier is it's not restful. In order to make this thing restful, we're gonna need to use something called Azure Functions Proxies. So let's go over and take a look at those and we'll see how we can do that. Now, because we've pulled this thing in from GitHub, we first need to tell our project here that it's okay for us to edit the proxies here. It doesn't want us to, to overwrite anything, so we're just gonna change the settings to read write so that we can actually change the proxies. Let's go to the proxies tab here. We're just gonna add a new proxy. And we'll call this first proxy a get proxy. And the route template for that is gonna be API slash heroes. So instead of calling get heroes, we just wanna call API slash heroes. And we only want it to respond to a get. And the backend URL is going to be, we can actually use just localhost and then just point it to API slash get heroes. You can see that's auto filled in for us. So this localhost, instead of actually having to point at the URL for this right here, Azure Functions will recognize localhost as being a valid pointer to this function. So let's go ahead and create this and you'll see how this works and it'll make a little bit more sense. And here's our new URL. So let's copy this. Let's go over to Postman and drop this in and send it. Okay, it's still working. And our URLs are looking a lot more restful now. Let's take a look at another one that's a little bit more complicated. Let's do the update here. So we'll call it update. And then for route template, we're gonna say API slash hero slash ID. Because a restful URL for an update would be, we wanna call the API and we want a hero, and we wanna update it, and we'd pass the ID for the hero that we wanna update on the URL, because that's how restful URLs should look. Now for this, we're going to use the put, and then the backend URL is going to be that local host again, and we're gonna go update hero this time. Now, one other thing we need to do is we need to override the incoming request so that we can pass this parameter in as a query string variable. So we're gonna do that by expanding request overrides and we're gonna override the put and we're gonna add a parameter here. We're gonna say this parameter is called ID and it has a value of whatever has been passed in here on the route template. So all we're doing is saying when this route is fired, go ahead and pass in this ID here as a query string variable to the function because that's where the function is expecting the ID to be. So we'll go ahead and create this and we'll take a look at it in Postman and see exactly how this works. So let's grab our URL here. Let's come back. Uh, let's update this one right here with an ID of one. Open a new tab, go ahead and paste this in. And instead of this right here, we're gonna put in an ID of one. And then we can change our method to put and we can come back and add a body, which you remember is a raw, and it has a type of JSON. And we can pass in the name and the saying. All right, so let's go ahead and execute this. And we got back a good result here. So let's go ahead and check our get and make sure that everything looks correct, which is right here. And yeah, you can see it's been updated in the database. So we're good. Let's go ahead and create the last two proxies. I'll go ahead and just do those. All right, so, so you didn't have to watch me type that. I did a create, which is pretty simple. It just maps to API slash hero with a method of post. And the delete, which repeats that same trick of adding in a route template here with the ID and then passing the ID on a request override, just like we did for the update. But this one needs to be for a delete instead. Perfect. We're now ready to replace our application's traditional node API with our new serverless API. So let's go ahead and copy in here our URL. And you can see all of our new data is reflected in our application. So we can go back here and let's go to the file where all of these actual requests are made from the front end. That's in the source folder here and inside the api.js file. And you can see I've got a constant for the base API up here. Right now it's just 
pointed at slash API, which sends the request locally. But now we've replaced this with a serverless API. So we're gonna pull this out here and just paste that in so that it looks just like this. And now we can stop our node server, save this, and if we've done everything correct, the application should still be functioning with no difference. So if we go back, hmm, there's no data there. Why is that? Well, let's look at the dev tools. Let's go ahead and collapse this and see what our error is here. Let's go to the console. Uh, no access control allow origin. Hmm, interesting. Well, that's because we're trying to make a call for JSON data that's on a different domain than the one we're running on. You've probably seen this before if you've done web development. Now, so how do we fix it? We got a couple options. We could use JSONP or we can use something called cores. So we're going to use cores because function supports that. So let's go back and go to our Heroes API project here. We're going to go to platform features and cores right there. And then here we can specify all of the different allowed URLs. So we could specify just ours if we had it in production, but what we're going to do is just delete all these because the instructions say if we want to allow access from anywhere, delete everything and put a star in, which is what we're going to do. And we'll save that. And now we've enabled cores for our backend serverless API. So let's come back to our application, refresh. And now we've got our heroes back and everything should be functioning the way that it was before. So if we add in some exclamation marks here and save this and then refresh, our changes are persisted. And if we delete it, it goes away and our changes are persisted. So we have now replaced all of our traditional node API with a serverless API. And if we come back here, we can actually take this entire server folder and just delete it. Boom, all of that code is gone. It's all now in a serverless API, which is pretty neat. And that's it, we're done. We've taken a node-based API and we've converted that to a serverless API using Azure Functions and Azure Functions proxies. Now, all of the source code from this video is in the description below the video, as well as links to Azure Functions so that you can get started writing serverless APIs yourself today. Thanks so much for joining.